This segment of Naperville Sports Weekly is brought to you in part by the Daily Herald. Matia Valley Volleyball coach James Milkert, any unique situation here, you know, with the new school opening, being able to build the, the program and everything from the ground up, you would tell me an exciting idea, but in practice maybe a little bit different? <laughs> yeah, a lot of exciting um, ideas trying to start a volleyball program, and you got a blank slate to build whatever ideas that you want. Um, trying to establish traditions is um, it's a very exciting idea. Um, buying uniforms, all that's very exciting up front. When you get down to the day-to-day -day, um, activities of making that happen, it's, it was very challenging the last two years, but I feel like we have established ourselves slowly the last couple of years, and uh, we've got our uniforms ordered, we've got volleyballs that um, we're content with, and starting to slowly establish some traditions and some common philosophies across the teams, and so we're getting there. Um, but you think sometimes all that stuff's going to happen overnight and you're just going to, that program's going to start and everything's going to happen. But it's been a fun experience, but very challenging. What are a couple of those maybe new traditions or building blocks that you guys have maybe put in as a staff as you've moved along, you know, first competing on a sophomore level, then the varsity with no seniors, then where you guys are today as a full program? Yeah, um, the first thing that comes to mind is um, trying to get our girls to be motivated to get the best out of themselves um, and not take anything for advantage every day. Um, it's a unique opportunity, you know, anything could happen outside of practice and so trying to work hard when we're here because there have not been um, upper class women to, to push the younger girls and so the juniors and seniors that are here, you know, they've played and they've played the, uh, a lot the last couple of years and so they've had to find uniquely inside them some drive because there have not been people above them pushing them. And so right now we've tried to instill that value and, and hopefully it'll become easier once there is competition from the top down. Um, but just in terms of not taking anything for, advan um, for granted and, and enjoying the opportunities we have together, it's been very important for us to establish. 16 and 15 in uh, your guys' first year of varsity competition, are you happy with that? I imagine with no seniors, any season over 500, you guys get a postseason win as well. I imagine you got to be pretty happy with that coming into this year. Yeah, we were very happy with that. Um, it's a fabulous group of girls in the background. Um, they are the best people and, and they work hard and I really feel like we squeezed every ounce of potential out of um, each other as individuals and as a team last year. We, we were in close matches most of the time, um, but we just sometimes lacked some experience to pull through the tight situations. And already you can see that we've sort of figured some of those things out. And you, you can tell we've got some seniors on the team, which has been great this year so far. And there's a couple players, you know, that really everybody knows about. Jessica Bodie, you know, the pit recruit, and Alyssa as well. What, what do those two bring to the table for you, kind of as leaders and as players on the court? Yeah, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Um, they're a great balance on each other. I think they both make plays. Um, Alyssa is so solid in the back row, and Jessica is so solid in the front row. And we, we score most of our points uh, when Jess is in the front row, and, and um, they're, a, they're a great personal balance also, kind of like a yin and yang. Um, Jessica tends to sometimes be more lighthearted. Um, on the court, she does her job, and she works very, very hard, but she picks people up and is uh, goofy at times to make people smile and Alyssa is just fierce all the time. She's a fierce competitor all the time um, in the gym and outside of the gym. Uh, and so they're a great balance and, and they work well and I'm glad we have both of them and they're, they're different strengths. And I know on the varsity roster you guys really even this year have a young roster I believe only four or five seniors. Who are some of these younger players that we're going to see worked into the mix and uh, what do they bring to the table as well? Yeah, I'm very excited about it actually. Um, we have some young talent, um, and so we're an interesting mix, again, of now veteran players for the first time, and I thought that's what our strength would be, but we have some good younger players, and um, Lexi Lobdell is a freshman from Granger Middle School, and she's playing on the outside for us, and she has um, done a great job of transitioning to high school volleyball, and is working very hard, and is very, very coachable, and she has the potential to be very terminal on the outside for us. And, Ellie Peterson as a sophomore is competing and working hard at the setter position and um, a, another girl, a sophomore, Kaylin Terrain, moved in from Indiana and, and she's helped us in the middle as well and we're a lot deeper, um, we're very athletic and, and very different than I from last year and I didn't see that coming so it was a great surprise at summer camp and our tryouts.
When you have some of these younger kids that are playing up at this varsity level, do you do you have to approach things differently as a coach? I mean, you're dealing with some ninth and 10th graders rather than 11th and 12th graders. Like a lot of these area coaches, especially, I imagine some of these players getting baptized by fire. Yeah, they uh, are for so sure. For sure. Um, especially Lexi this year so far, and Kaylin's new to our school and to our program, and, and Ellie getting some more court time. Uh, I, I try really hard to be more patient and tolerant, and I, I can see that they have the tools to get there, and you just can't maybe be as in, in their face as, as you might with a junior and senior who know you, they know me, um, and they'll receive that a little differently, and sometimes you just need some experience to learn some of those things, so there's no sense in yelling at them and, and getting real upset about it. You just got to... It's just some growing pains. Definitely. Now, club volleyball is something that's really been around for a while. One of the really first club sports that I know I remember. How much have you seen that change the game at the high school level? I know, you know, when you see a lot of these girls' names listed in the paper, you see the high school team name, then you see the club team name right next to it. How much have you kind of seen that transform this high school volleyball game that we see now? Yeah, I think the change has been huge. Um, I think it's a lot more competitive. I think it provides a great outlet for girls to be involved in um, high intense uh, sports, specifically volleyball. And I, I think there's an unbelievable transition to high school volleyball. And that when you see good teams play and good players play, they, they are outstanding um, and certainly a lot better than even very recently. And so it, it, makes, it makes it a lot of fun, it makes it very competitive. Um, there's good clubs all over the place. You can go everywhere um, in the suburbs and find very strong teams, very talented teams. Now I know uh, looking at your guys' roster for this season, I saw at the, at the bottom of it there was a Latin phrase. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but by the power, <laughs> I can't by, pronounce it either. By the power of the internet, you know, it, uh, the translation, the rough translation was, he who dares wins. Right. What's that about? I just thought that was a good thing to uh, sort of rally us behind. We've got nothing to lose. You know, it's the first time we've had four years of girls here. Um, you might as well take chances, you might as well dare. Um, Nothing good happens from being passive and, and not taking chances. And so we're trying to get them to believe in that because we need them to believe in that because there's nobody above them like we talked about before to, to get them to do those things. Now for the Mustangs looking forward this season, we know you guys have a talented squad. What, uh, what are the expectations? What are you expecting out of this team here this year in 2011? Um, I expect and I hope and I trust that we'll compete in every match we play in. And if we can believe together that we can pull those close matches out, past the 15-15 tie, um, I think if we gather some momentum, I think that we can be very dangerous. Um, we, I think we have a ton of potential, and I'm very excited about it. We just need our veteran players to, to lead, and we need our younger players to join the mix and not be afraid to step up and make plays. Definitely, well, Coach, we appreciate you letting us come by practice, yeah, and uh, good luck here in the next couple weeks. Yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate it.